Welcome to Learning Out Loud. My name is Eric Peng. I've read over a thousand books in the last decade, and I've connected 6,000 of my top learnings in this digital notebook. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this quote and question, connect it to my digital notebook, and see what we can learn together. Here's the quote. I do not believe in absolute truths. I fear such beliefs because they block the search for better understanding. So here's a question I'm posing. How might absolute truths block understanding? New metaphors can have the power to define reality. So part of that saying when we, when we shift what we believe, the lens through which we look at the world, how we perceive reality shifts. Related to this idea is our assumptions are our glasses. So I think this, this kind of sheds some light on this. How might absolute truths block understanding? Our assumptions are our glasses. So if we do believe in absolute truths and we see that truth as like glasses that are immutable. So imagine if I had like a pink elephant just printed on my glasses and that is just always, I'm wearing it with me everywhere I go. And I do not question whether I am wearing these glasses, which is similar to, I think it was Plato's concept of the cave. When these people in the cave look at these shadows on the wall and then assume that they are re real and reality as opposed to looking behind them and exploring outside of the cave, when you believe that those images on the wall are absolute truths, you are blocked from searching for better understanding. That when you believe in these absolute truths, you have no reason to search for some deeper truth. Let me see if I can find something on the matrix. The internet is the matrix. Open your eyes. I would not have you descend into your own dream. I would have you be a conscious citizen of this terrible and beautiful world. So Coates here is kind of alluding to a similar thing that what we perceive may be perceived as absolute truth might also just be your own subjective dream. And when you when you blind yourself to what else might be out there, um, there is a sense of ignorance that arises. So open your eyes. Uh, I like this one. Speech silenced when decision made. As long as the majority cannot make up its mind, speech is allowed. As soon as it is pronounced its irrevocable decision, speech is silenced. So similarly, when, when you believe in something as an absolute truth, you've made up your mind. Like there's no questioning of it because it's becomes a first principle in your, in your mind. Like there's, it's like saying one plus one is two. Like if you're, if that is an absolute truth to you and you're never going to question it, then you won't consider the possibility of one plus one, not being equal to true to two, which to some degree is necessary for us to live. But there are so many things like this that we take for granted that the authors are arguing we can be helped by acknowledging our ignorance. It's by Thomas Sowell. Of all ignorance, the ignorance of the educated is the most dangerous. Not only are educated people more likely to have more influence, they are the last people to suspect that they don't know what they are talking about when they go outside their narrow fields. So it's kind of saying a similar thing. So we'll hear is when, when you assume you know everything and then, so you might be an expert in some small field, but then if you extrapolate that to thinking that you, you know everything, which is similar to this idea of absolute truths, then that ignorance becomes dangerous. To censor is to assume we cannot be wrong. Okay, this one's good. Censors assume we cannot be wrong. By John Stuart Mill from his book on liberty. Liberty. If any opinion is compelled to silence, that opinion may, for aught we can certainly know, be true. To deny this is to assume our own infallibility. So, again, this sense of when there are absolutes, and Christianity and religions use this frequently, that there are just absolutes, then you are silencing or censoring 
anything that is counter to that absolute. And the thing is, there's, there's an infinite number of things that we do not know. Our ignorance is infinite. And to assume that we have somehow gained some absolute truth is to assume our own infallibility. And throughout human history, we've been wrong so many times. Things that we have assumed about the world, that the earth is the center of the universe, you know, was proven wrong. Like there, there are things that we just instinctively believe is true and they're wrong. This is challenging because to, to challenge what society and the group view as an absolute truth is, is a dangerous thing to do, as Voltaire mentions here. Our wretched species is so made that those who walk on the well-trodden path always throw stones at those who are showing a new road. So when we are trying to take off this glasses, if we assume kind of like the matrix, everyone's plugged into, let's just say a metaphor for the matrix might be like these devices. Everyone's plugged in. We all have this, let's say in capitalist society, like this one goal of making more money, your productivity is your self-worth, for example. And this is what many people perceive as an absolute truth. If you are attempting to pave a different path and walk your own path, it's dangerous um, because People are so used to the lens through which they see the world, they don't want you questioning their absolute truths. And to be disconnected from the group is challenging. So, you know, Voltaire also mentioned, it is dangerous to be right in matters on which the established authorities are wrong. Carl Jung had a great quote here, live your truths. So if you discover what you call a truth, you should test it, try to eat it. If it feeds you, it is good. But if you cannot live by it and only assume it ought to feed other people, then it is bad. The real test is that your truth should be good for yourself. And that's by Carl Jung. So I've got a decent number of connections here and I hope that we've kind of shed some light on this question of how my absolute truths block understanding. There's the sense that when we are when we are seeing the world through a fixed perspective we are essentially becoming blind to all those other perspectives that might exist we are silencing the alternate realities we are censoring what we assume cannot be wrong and part of the difficulty of actually not believing in absolute truths and opening our minds is that society will push back against us. There will be people that criticize us, especially if we broadcast our own subjective truths. And so there's a lot of personal work and discovery that needs to occur to create the kind of psychological mental fortitude in order to, to do that. Um, but when we do live our own truths, when we test truths as opposed to accepting them, that they must be true for us, we then start to live a life that is good for ourselves. And Arthur Schopenhauer said, he who truly thinks for himself is like a monarch and that he recognizes no one over him. And in the past, monarchs, kings, queens, argued that they spoke absolute truth. They spoke the word of God. They were a conduit for God. And Schopenhauer here is saying, when you do not believe in these absolute truths from outside, when you truly think for yourself, when you live your truths, like Carl Jung mentioned, you live like a monarch. When you do that, you are truly free. And this is related to an idea of a question that I used to ask myself frequently and kind of still do, but what, what is the meaning of my life? What, what is the meaning of life? And Jean-Paul Sartre mention life has no meaning a priori before you come alive life is nothing it's up to you to give it a meaning and value is nothing else but the meaning you give so when you move away from this idea of absolute truth and you move to a subjective subjective truth for yourself you're shifting from a perspective of living for the world living for other people and assuming that there is no alternative to that to then living for yourself living in your own freedom, living your own truth, inventing your own value system, inventing your own meaning and purpose, and that way you can live a more fulfilling life. So I might challenge you from kind of learning in this 
video to ask yourselves, what absolute truths do you hold in your own mind? What might you be able to experiment with? What might you be able to let go and maybe consider like, what if I took off these glasses and ask the question, what if? Like what else, what other beliefs might there be compared to the belief that I might be holding so deeply? Because in the process of doing that, just by letting go of some absolute truths, you know, we might be able to seek some better, better understanding of both the world and ourselves.